from Soldier Field in Chicago. This is the NFL on EA Sports. It's the Chicago Bears taking on the Houston Texans. One of the great venues to watch a game in any sport and one of the best home crowds in any sport, Soldier Field in Chicago. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Chicago Bears. So here's Kaimi Fairbairn to do the honors. And off we go from Soldier Field. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. And not only does he have all the skills that you're looking for as a quarterback, he's incredibly tough and plays the game fearlessly is both a runner and a passer. You provide a good running game around him and let him throw deep off of play action, you've got an all-star in the making. Mooney, the motion man right. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. They'll come up now, second and four from the 31. From the gun, here's Fields. And this is taken in by Darnell Mooney. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 45-yard line. Fields. There's Moody with another catch. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. He's been a one-man wrecking crew these last couple of plays. This time, 18 more and a first down. That early game script that they drew up is working pretty well here on this first drive. Already in field goal range, Charles knocking on the door of the red zone. You know, Brandon, when we met with the coaching staff, they kind of predicted that they would come out firing like this. I think you and I were a little skeptical that it would be this easy, but they certainly knew what they were doing in scouting, in preparation, and understanding what their team was capable of. On first and ten, it's Herbert. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Pretty effective run there. Now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality. And pound the rock. Second down and a yard. 
to throw his fields and this will be caught by Mooney and able to get him down but he does reach the five third catch for him on this drive alone and it'll give him a first down a lot of precision being shown on this opening drive they've been methodical they've been crisp and as a reward they're going to be set up with an early first and goal a terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door first and goal and they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. A good solid game there on first down, but the defense has to be happy. They didn't let it pop for anything bigger. Second and goal from the one. Now it's Fields. Open man, he finds Komet. Touchdown, Chicago. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Bears get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. And the QB rating right now is sky high. Four for four on that opening drive, and it ends with a touchdown pass. Yeah, I don't know quite how to figure it out. I think I need my friends from MIT to come in and help me. <laughs> I think 158.3 is the number one. No, th that's the, right? that's the highest you can get. That's where he is. He'd like to continue on that pace. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7-0 in favor of the Bears. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it was all capped off by Cole Komet with a touchdown catch. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. You ain't going to burn me. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. And they will be led out by their 6-3 quarterback. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. Singletary to get the drive started. And he'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Second down and three. They go right back to Singletary. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. Throwing now is Stroud. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now we're going to get a stoppage. Appears to be an injured bear on the field. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Mike, number 53, Mike, 53. I'm coming. 
They'll run on first down with Singletary. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Second and nine. Stroud looking to throw. That one complete. It's Tank Dell. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 41-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. So the completion good for seven there, and it's second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred the defense. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Really a solid start here on the opening drive, Charles. He's now 4-4, four of four, and they're already in plus territory. Brandon, he's been so precise to start this game. Like we're watching an operation taking place right now. Master surgeon at work. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. He'll take it inside the 25. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Here's a second and eight. Stroud to throw it. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. Excellent defensive effort to get to him and provide a little contact before the catch could be made cleanly. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Now Stroud. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. That third down conversion, good for 23. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just need the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. First and goal, and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Singletary is into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So that one a long 11-play drive, and it was finished off by a Devin Singletary touchdown run.
Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Fields on first down. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that give him four on the carry and it'll make this a third and about two on any running play this call they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance but when you get a nice gain like that you're able to do so many things anyway you can come back and run essentially the same play again continue to move the ball on the ground or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Foreman will try to pick it up, and he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. I'll bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. Fourth down, so they send out Trenton Gill. Desmond King deep for Houston. And just a net of 31 here. 40-yard punt, nine on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Second and seven, operating from the 34. Singletary again. And he'll get this up to about the 40. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. Here now, third and a yard. And Stroud now to throw. Throw out wide is incomplete. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand and forcing a three and out and giving the ball back to their offense. Now on fourth down, here's Cameron Johnston on to punt for Houston. Back deep, Trent Taylor. And 
the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So possession goes over here on the punt, and it'll be first and 10 Bears from deep in their own territory. The Chicago offense set to get started. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 13. They'll start out here with the option left. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so he didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Now Fields. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. Fields, we know he has the good mobility. He flashes it there as he scrambles for the first down. Partner, there's a downside to everything, and the danger of man coverage is if you're locking down your target, you often turn your back to the quarterback, and you don't see him. Sometimes you open up a big lane for him to hit you for big yardage, and that was an astute play by him to scramble out, see that lane, and burn them for a first down. Herbert powering up the middle, and he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle, but give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Now second and nine. Herbert now on the option. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Eight yards on the run there, and that leaves him with third and just a couple. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Here we go. 319, get that up. They'll run with Herbert. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. Fields tapping it forward, jet sweep. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Here's second and 10. Fields now to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. But prior to that, he had hit his first six passes to start the game, so on a nice little run to begin. It feels like this offense has carried its dress rehearsal into the game. You know, because you do practice it, you do go through it, and in this case, it is clicking exactly like they drew it up. Throwing on third down, Fields. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Fields to Komet there for a Chicago first. <laughs> I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Here 
So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 48-yard line. Throwing again is Fields. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. But one of the things we talked about coming into this one is that we were never going to question the fight that he's going to have for all four quarters of a game. But ideally, you want him fighting for big plays and first downs early, not fighting just to get back to the line of scrimmage, as we saw right there. Now a second and ten. Here's Fields. And that is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Back to throw. Fields. He's got his running back out of the backfield. Push it. Touchdown, Chicago. Khalil Herbert, 48 yards. And the Bears have taken the lead. Well, forget about the weapons out wide. He knows he's got another weapon in the backfield of the passing game, Charles, and he utilized him perfectly on that play. And the offense coordinator showed me something on that play, Brandon, because so often during a game, our cameras find them looking down at their play sheets, and you wonder if they're absorbing anything. He had something specific in mind, and he went to it, and it worked well. Now the point after try for Santos. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Houston set to take over. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. First down, they'll start out with Singletary. He'll get a yard, that's all, as they get him down at the 28. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. Texans football to start quarter two as they're looking at a second down and nine to go. Ready, set. to throw here's Stroud on a slant here's Collins and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44 
Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. They'll give this to Singletary running right. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. A leaping, and he makes the grab. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. A gain there of 30 big ones. And there's not a quarterback in the league that will ever complain about having small receivers like a Tyreek Hill or a Cooper Cup who can find a seam, have good vision, and get open. But when you're throwing downfield like this, you want a big, tall receiver who can go above the rim, or if you're a volleyball fan, above the net and get it. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. Stroud. He finds his target. It's Schultz. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Second down and four. Here's Stroud. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. The Texans on third down. They've been okay two for three thus far. This is third and four. Here goes Stroud again. Touchdown! Nico Collins, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Texans are an extra point away from evening this one up. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play, even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor, in effect. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. Now we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So that drives seven plays in length. And it was Nico Collins who finished it off with a touchdown reception. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And right now, we've got a little bit of an offensive masterpiece going on both sides, moving the football, scoring points. It's almost like somebody put the defense on rookie mode in this one. I mean, we haven't even left the first half, Charles, and we're certainly on pace for a shootout. An excellent start for both offenses. The fans have to be enjoying this to seeing all these points go up on the board. As a former defender, you know I'm not enjoying this at all, but right now, both these teams just trading haymakers. Let's see if anyone slips up first 
Can anyone counter with a nice little jab and get things going in their direction? Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 29, here's second and five. Big stop, D. Big stop. Let's go. Here's Fields. This throw incomplete, nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. Well, those two have hooked up for a touchdown once already in this game, that time unable to find the completion. Yeah, it just appeared they wanted to get him out into open space and try and get him the football. As you mentioned, unable to connect. Out of the gun, Fields. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. Now here's Trenton Gill on to punt. And no return on this one as that kicks out of bounds, so they'll start just outside of their own 30-yard line. Here's Nico Collins and this offense getting set to go for another drive. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. <laughs> Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're never way, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of plays. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. On first down, here's Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. It'll go as a gain of four, and that will bring up second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Now a second and six. Singletary here running out of the gun. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. 42 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they stouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 38. A shotgun snap to Stroud. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he gets it down to the 32. Call it a gain of six on the play. And that'll bring up second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back. Let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They'll send a receiver in motion left. They'll try and run for this with Singletary. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did.
Let's go now. Gravity Lion. 53, 53. In your face. Stroud to the air on first and 10. He finds his man complete. That's Schultz. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Here's second and three. A give up the middle to Singletary. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Back to throw. Stroud got his tight end. That's complete. That's Schultz. Touchdown, Texans. Dalton Schultz, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Texans have broken the tie. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like, based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was the tight end, Dalton Schultz, on the touchdown reception to cap the drive. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Tyler Scott now from his end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. They'll look for a drive to tie this up, down 21-14 as they have it first and 10. Start by run of the option to the right. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's a give to Herbert. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second down and six now from the 42. 
Read option. Here's Herbert. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. Two straight four-yard runs, and it is steadily working the ball downfield. To me, they're staying right on schedule. First down, you want four yards or more to set up the rest of the drive. They're getting exactly that. The Bears on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This time they face a third and two. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield... I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. Now here's Trenton Gill now. now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And the putt goes out of bounds, so no chance to bring it back, and they will spot it at the 24-yard line. Now let's spotlight Devin Singletary as this offense comes back out. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker. And he's able to get it back to right around the 27. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful. They get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there, exactly as you described, an interception. They run it on first with Foreman down to the 22-yard line. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Here we go. Second down and six now. Ready? Mike, 53. A shotgun snap, Fields over the middle, and that's caught by Komet. And down inside the 15 he goes. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Operating from the gun, Fields. He shakes him off, but he can't get away forever, and down he goes. Sheldon Rankins abruptly ends that play with a sack. Well, that's what they have to do more defensively, not just getting sacks, but they have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving him up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Another try after the first down sack. Fields, and he will find Scott on the right side complete. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Here's third and six. Looking to throw. Fields to the end zone, but it's incomplete. 
Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. No fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Santos' kick is up and through, and that'll bring him back within four. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense, the firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. Following the made field goal, out instead is the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick this away. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Now Houston's offense taking over again. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive, because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. That would almost intercept it, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Stroud working out of the gun. That's complete to Dell. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. But certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. Steps away. He lost nine there. That's really going to set him back for second down. to throw Stroud catch is made it's Schultz on the out route and there's a completion to the tight end and look at the size of these players nowadays at that spot 6'4 six, 6'5 six, and up a lot of guys used to be basketball players somehow came back to football and that's really good for the game of football you're getting better athleticism great hand-eye coordination guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes a reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Stroud on third down now. And this one is incomplete. The secondary has been roasted in this first half, and they get a measure of revenge there. Nice play on the deep ball. Yeah, they're going to need a few more plays like that in order to get their confidence fully back, but that's one step in the proper direction. On fourth down, out is the punter, Cameron Johnston, to boot it away. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And taken right on the 30. Just 21 yards on the punt there. And the Bears take over. The Chicago offense set to get started. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, 
That's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. On first down, Fields. That's complete to Mooney. Just a gain of a couple there, and it'll be second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. A good decision in the end to pull it and run, get some nine yards and a first. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. On first and ten, here's Fields. And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. First down throw, Fields. Dancing to his left. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. No shortage of impressive moments from him thus far. Now he's halfway to the century mark, and we're still in the first half. There's been no answer for his running ability so far by the defense. I can't wait to see what adjustments they'll have to make during the halftime break. Second and 10. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Looking left side, and it's complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 18. A good pick up there, 26 yards. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the gun, here's Fields. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sacked back at the 29. Jonathan Greenard running in to pick up the sack. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. He continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure, and these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. Santos' kick is up and through. And that'll bring him back within a point. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. So six seconds, all that remains of this first half is the kick is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25.
And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we'll send you down to Orlando and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Both these offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. The Texans going to take over here to start quarter number three. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. First and 10, it's Stroud. He's got his man. It's the tight end, Brevin Jordan. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games, and we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. Being chased out left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. As we both know, there was a lot that went into why they made him their first-round pick this year, and part of it was what they saw in college, his playmaking ability when things break down. As soon as he saw he wasn't getting a lane to throw, he pivoted and found an alternate way to the marker. On the give, this is Singletary. And just shutting him off there. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 64 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Looking to throw. Stroud. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off, okay? So they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync stayed in great communication and as he dragged across each zone you see him pointing communicating there he is and they passed him off to each defender ended up making a nice play even though it was complete on second down it's stroud open man is noah brown and he's going to have another first down as the tackles made here at the bears 28. 
A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. Six yards there on the keeper. It's second down. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. Shifts by at the 15. And he's going to have a gain of 11 to the 11 before he's brought down first and 10. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Now a first and 10 at the 11. On the handoff, it's Singletary. And he's brought down. Same exact result as last play, a pickup of 11. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. They run here with Singletary. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Devin Singletary, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Texans take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. So he had the nice run to get him down there, was stopped just short of the goal line, but they go right back to him, CD, and he delivers to finish the drive off. A little extra determination there, don't you think, partner? You notice he didn't tap on his helmet and say, get me out after the run down to the end zone. He said, I almost got in. I'm going to get in on my own. I'm staying in. And he carries it across the goal line. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And the lead is up to eight. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told. And it was finished off by a Devin Singletary touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. Starting on the ground with Herbert. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. 
Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. Second down, they go back to Herbert. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. So that time they got the left guard with a hold. And let's face it, in today's ball, you might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. To throw his fields. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it. An in route going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind, he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now it's Fields. And this will be caught by Mooney. And he is stopped just short on third down. Got nine yards, but needed ten. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down. And he was fighting like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one tackle, but couldn't spring himself free. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. <laughs> 42 yards on the punt, just two on the return. And the Texans will take over. Now let's spotlight Devin Singletary as this offense comes back out. He is hoping to find the end zone for a third time, and we sit now in the third quarter and nothing would excite him more, but I think even more so, his offensive line. Anytime you've got a guy scoring that many times, that means you've done a really nice job in front of him. You're always giving props to the big fellas up front. It's always a good idea. Those are some massive men. Stroud now on first and 10. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Stroud looking to throw. That is caught by Dell. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. To the right side and caught by Dell. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Stroud will look to throw once more. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. Demarcus Walker, he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. That's a ball he needs to let go of there. 
Wasn't the most time in the world to work through his progression, but NFL quarterbacks, they've got to sense the pressure. They've got that internal clock, and the ball has to be gone. And if you're not going to escape and run for it, you have to let it go before the pressure gets to you and puts you on the ground. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry. And they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. Third down and 13. Stroud to throw it. In trouble, and he's taken down. That was a corner blitz, and it was Kyler Gordon getting in there for the sack. He saw the pressure, and he got out, but he never got upfield. And the defense, they took full advantage of a rookie mistake there. They were able to add a big loss on the sack. Here's Cameron Johnston now, as he's on to punt for Houston. And here's Taylor on the return. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag, punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Hey, check back, check back, back six, back six. Fields on first down. Throwing left side, it's complete. And out across midfield, down to the 45. The end result, 21 yards. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first and ten, it's Herbert. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. Big Sheldon Rankin's there to bring him down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Fields. And that falls to the ground incomplete. Well, a nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver. But they just couldn't connect. And that will send them back to the drawing board. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here. Third and ten. Operating from the gun. Fields. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Malik Collins able to get him down behind the line of scrimmage, and it will be fourth down. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And now out comes Houston. 
This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. He finds his man complete. That's Schultz. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even ten years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. 97 yards rushing now for Singletary, and he's got a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. On first down, they stick with Singletary. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a lot of running room there. Not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and seven. And Stroud now to throw. Got his man, Dell. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 38-yard line. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 38. Stroud out of the gun here. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. And that's good for a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. From the 32 yard line now, here's a second and four. Now Stroud. And he's gonna find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 22-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. But well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. From the 17, here's second and four. Back to throw. Stroud, he finds his man complete. That's Schultz. And the Texans are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. Well, he does have one touchdown in the game already, and while this one won't go for six, it's enough to get him first and goal, but you and I both know he's going to be a little upset he didn't cross the goal line for a second time in this one. Might want the ball here on the next play. Looking to throw. Stroud got his tight end. That's complete. It's Jordan. Touchdown, Brevin Jordan, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Texans go up by two touchdowns.
And remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. Yeah, three touchdown passes. You're right. He looks comfortable. What are they doing? Anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. Fairbairn good with the extra point. And the lead is up to 15 now. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And the result, a Houston touchdown. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Fields throw there, complete to Mooney. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Fields. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Lewis. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. They'll send a receiver in motion to the right. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. Right there. Dead, baby. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Bears football, but they trail on the scoreboard as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. So they keep the ball, but work to do on second and long. Back to throw, Fields. Open man right side is St. Brown. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Hey, check Mike, check Mike, Mike, six, Mike. Oh, hurry up, hurry up. Throwing on third down, Fields. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's more. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. Here comes the Bears punter now. 
as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Oh, this is off the side of his foot. And the punt goes out of bounds. Where will they put it? They'll put it just inside the 45-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Good starting field position for the Houston Texans here as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. Ah, uh, the quarterback got away with one there. Looked like he was in line for a pick, but instead it's knocked harmlessly to the turf. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Back to throw, here's Stroud. On a slant, here's Collins. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 17 yards on the catch and run, it's a first down. Well, normally you might say start running the football, you've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. They'll run on first down with Singletary. Oh, and that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. 112 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. So first and 10 now from the 30. They go right back to Singletary, and he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. A good convergence there defensively. Only a yard, and it's second down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. A handoff on the option to Singletary. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. They're in pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Stroud. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Texans are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because, to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. Oh, 
A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Here's Stroud. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line. Second and goal. A handoff here to Ogan Bawale. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Dare Ogunbowale taking it in from four yards out. And the Texans have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. And that right there is the definition of a statement drive. You're in the fourth quarter trying to get to the finish line. And here they were able to hold the ball for a long time and move it down the field. And how about them finishing it off with the touchdown run? Winning football 101. Check that box. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it results in a four-yard touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. The Chicago offense set to get started. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out-personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. On first down, it's Fields. They'll set up the screen for Herbert. Oh, he's got a little daylight. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide, and these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Out of the gun, Fields. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Here we go. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Here's Fields. Open man here is Scott, complete. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Fields. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 38-yard line. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out and to that end a nice pass play there to push things downfield yeah and we know in this league a loss is a loss and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or boy something that feels a little bit cheap 
But they trimmed that lead down to just two scores. That's still a benefit to this squad. A shotgun snap, Fields. Now that'll be caught by St. Brown. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Here's a second and five. Fields now to throw. That's complete to his running back, Herbert. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Again, he'll drop to throw. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Fields throwing again. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. But well, this has certainly turned into a showcase game for what he can do on the ground because they're just continuing to give him chances to run it, and he's earning every additional carry by putting up positive yardage on each run. They'll run with Herbert, and he won't get close. Only a yard, fourth and three. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll try and run for it. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. Now, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. He'll get three yards on the scramble there. It's second down. His running ability has been an extra dimension of their game plan thus far. For once, though, he doesn't create any magic against the front that's prepared for him to try and take off. The ball on the eight still could get a first down technically. Second and seven. Back to throw. Fields and fights him off. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Kudos for the defense from me on that one because they were prepared the whole way for him to try to escape and hit them for more yardage running it. I like the way they stayed zeroed in on him and kept him contained when he pulled the ball down. I think he was fortunate to get what he did on that run. Third and two. Looking to throw, Fields. And he is in, touchdown, Chicago. Justin Fields, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Bears have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. The Bears offense staying put. You know, Justin Fields always a threat to run. They'll go for two here. They'll look to throw. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries 
and see what the data tells us because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation this time unsuccessfully I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go with it moved up from the three to the two you would think maybe a few more attempts at running I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation Well, after the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Well, let's spotlight Devin Singletary as this offense comes back out. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big-time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. Ground to the air on first and ten. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it's second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. From the 35, back to work on second and four. And movement here by one of the Texans up front. In comes the flag. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. The false start hurts him there a bit. Backs him up to second and nine. A run with Ogan Bawale. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The Texans on third down. They've had good success. Five for eight to this point. Here it's third and three. Pierce will try to pick it up. And he appears to be about two feet short on third and three. Leaves him with a fourth and one. So many things go into making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start and then a nice tackle to finish things off. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Houston. A 40-yard punt, no return, and they will take over first and 10. The Bears offense out there set and ready to go. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 18. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And his throw is incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. Here we go. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. 
to throw again. Fields. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. Here's third and three. Operating from the gun, Fields. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. He's been making himself a weapon as a runner, and the results, they've been welcomed by his offense. My question is about the defense we're watching right now, partner. Even after he got him with a scramble earlier this drive, they still aren't devoting enough attention to him. I would expect that after that carry, they'll do a much better job going forward, spying on him on passing downs. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and 10. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. They'll try again here, second and 10. Operating from the gun, Fields steps away to his left. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Here's first down. Back to throw. Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end commit. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Under 90 seconds to go. Here's second and 10. Throwing again. Fields. He'll get this one to the Golden Domer, St. Brown. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 22-yard line. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion, so I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a nonstop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. He's having a nice game through the air. His decision-making's been really good, solid there again. Just seeing nothing downfield goes underneath. Nice game. How about the patience? Because when you're having a big game through the air, you're looking for those chunk plays, those big ones downfield. Instead, as you noted, takes the check down, dumps it off, gains good yardage anyway. Really well executed. Here we go. 
Another try, second and 10 now. They'll look to throw again. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Well, your QB's been sacked four times in the game already, and they're the holding goal. And you know darn well the offensive line coach is frustrated and upset that he's been hit that many times already. He doesn't really care that they hold now. Just don't let him get hit anymore. Well, they'll come up now. This is second and long. To the air again, Fields. Over the middle, complete. That's Lewis. A higher scoring game, Charles, than we typically see in the National Football League, but fun to watch these offenses. They were really clicking. It seemed like everything that they dialed up worked. Yeah, it certainly was fun to watch from our perspective. How'd you like to be those defensive coaches, though? That wasn't a blast for them at all. And let's face it, they all game plan, they all scout, they all think they're prepared. But executing and stopping teams, that's another matter entirely. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Soldier Field.